welcome to KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio and the Southern California Business Report with Yvette Walker, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. Welcome and thank you for joining the Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV. I'm Yvette Walker, live, blasting our signal from the center of Southern California, serving a population of over 25 million. Get us crystal clear and on demand by downloading the free live streaming app on Google Play or the Apple App Store. A huge shout out to the team as always, Mitch, Bill, and Sean. I love you. And to our special advisory committee, Bill Morris, UCI School of Business, Jose and Camila Rubio, thank you so much. Also, don't forget to check out the Jay Kaplan Show on Fridays at 3, also on KMET, as well as the Aaron Michael Sanchez Morning Show every morning at 8. Today, I have the distinct honor and privilege to introduce Ms. Aquanetta Warren. She was elected as mayor in December of 2010 and overwhelmingly re-elected in 2014 and 2018. Aquanetta Warren is serving her third term as the mayor of the city of Fontana. Mayor Warren focuses her administrations on bolstering economic development, creating educational opportunities, and advocating for a healthier community. During her eight years as councilwoman and now her third term as mayor, Warren has spearheaded significant economic growth and has played a critical role in positioning Fontana as a supply chain hub that provides critical goods throughout the world. Mayor Warren emphasizes that Fontana is open for business and works directly with the Fontana Chamber of Commerce to support the needs of the business community, ensuring that every child in Fontana receives the highest level of education and career readiness. Warren formed the Mayor's Education Coalition, a network of schools businesses and local leaders committed to preparing students for job and career opportunities after graduation. Realizing what a strong economy requires a healthy community, Mayor Warren founded the award-winning and model program across the nation, Healthy Fontana. Stemming from Healthy Fontana is the Fontana Walks program. What began, what began as a challenge to the community to cumulatively walk 2 billion steps in 2017 has turned into monthly walks with nearly 9 billion steps taken to date. As a nationally recognized leader, Mayor Warren serves as chairwoman of the Workforce, Career and Technical Education Task Force and is the vice chairman of the Youth Issues Committee with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. She's member of the Intergovernmental Policy Advisory Committee to focus on trade issues. Member of the Southern California Association of Governments, uh, Economic and Human Development Committee, member of the Board of Directors, General Policy Committee, and Transit Committee of the San Bernardino County Transportation Authority. Mayor Warren earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science, Urban Studies from Occidental College, and an Honorary Doctorate degree in Theology from Next Dimension Bible College, and is a member of the Water of Life Community Church and has three children and three grandchildren. Thank you again for being with us today, Mayor Warren. Hi, how are you doing? I don't know how you do it. After reading your bio, I just have to <laughs> thank you for making the time to spend an hour with our viewers and our listeners to update us on all of the fabulous things that are happening in Fontana today. That's how I do it. We make it fabulous. I love it. And you are the epitome of fabulous, Mary Warren. You know this. I love you. So oh, for our listeners and our viewers today that maybe don't have the privilege of knowing you or, or knowing a little bit about you, please take us back and, you know, take us down the journey that led you to being the mayor of Fontana today. You know, I, I moved to Fontana in 1993. I lived in Compton, California. Um, I brought my family out here. And I was doing consulting work for the city of Upland, which I ended up retiring in 2015 after 29 years. So I was doing housing and I was doing working with the police department. I was one of the first members of their prop team, which was problem oriented policing. We worked on the apartments, uh, making sure they were safe and getting the natural resources that they needed. And then I came over to public works and I became a operation manager dealing with recycling and trash. And before I knew it, I was uh, promoted to deputy public works director. And so there I retired. But the journey for Fontana started with me with just my neighborhood. We didn't like the landscaping uh, 
vendor that they had selected. We thought we weren't getting the quality for our money. And so we residents stuck it out together and uh, we decided to get the best we could. And we've worked together over all these years and kept our neighborhood nice and safe. And that's how I got my start with city government out here is working with this great council. And before I knew I was appointed, I got elected in 2004, elected in 2008, and I went for mayor in 2010. And I'm going for my fourth term in November, and I'm still having a great time. Well, you know, um, I think not only are you having a great, great time, but all of the residents <laughs> and those that work and those that set up their businesses in Fontana are all having not only a good time, they're having a, a tremendous time. Um, please talk to us a little bit about your recent visit by the U.S. Secretary of Transportation. So the U.S. Secretary of Transportation came and visited Fontana and Mayor Warren. Please uh, share with us how that went and what came of that visit. We are blessed to have had, a, 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 not a developer, but a property owner. Uh, that owned over 964 acres here in Fontana. And one of those areas surround a uh, high school that our students go to. It is like 72 to 75% Fontana at Awanda High School. And we have always uh, tried to work with that uh, property owner and other people that own property adjacent to try to fix the street there so the children can get to school safely. It has been tragic. We've been so lucky that no one got hurt, but they are competing with cars and bikes. And when there's rain, floods, I mean, it's just been awful. And it's a one way in practically and one way out. And plus the emergency vehicles, when we need to get the emergency vehicles, the parents are all idling down the highway trying to get their kids to school safely. Well, okay. we, we finally won, I say a one, a win. We were granted $15 million from Department of Transportation. Wow. And the name of the project is Building uh, a Better Connection for the IE. And so with that, we had two great congressional leaders that worked with us, Congressman Pete Aguilar and Congresswoman Norma Torres. And I never will forget, I'll, I'll remember this to the day I die, getting a text message from her at 1145 at night saying, I know it's late, but I think if you want to be ever interrupted this time of night, you need to give me a call. But when she <laughs> told me we had gotten that grant, I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. I didn't want to wake up our staff, but I, at six o'clock, I was on the phone calling the city manager and anyone else that would hear me <laughs> that we had the grant. <laughs> Shooting it from the rooftops, $15 million. Dollars. Oh, my goodness. We're and one so of two Southern California cities, the city of Inglewood, my good friend, Mayor Butts, he got one, too, for his uh, program he has. But part of that, we were going to do a press conference last week. And then I got a call from the congresswoman again. You know, I love her calls. She don't play. <laughs> that we were going to have a visitor. And it was going to be Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. And I got to tell you, he got here at 745 in the morning and our life has changed as a result. Transformed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, OK, so 15 million dollars for street improvements to help that area around your schools and to make Fontana, you know, kind of traffic a little smoother, but the visit with Mr. Buttigieg, um, please talk about what that means for the city of Fontana and what other, you know, horizons you're looking at today. This is going to be the jumpstart we needed for infrastructure. You know, the state took away redevelopment, which was a great tool for us to provide infrastructure for projects. Well, here's our new infrastructure grant. And as a result of that, they're going to convert 564 acres into livable, where people will be able to live. Uh, they'll have commercial and retail. But what I'm most excited about is a planned hospital. So we're going to develop a medical complex just for that hospital and medical buildings for doctors and surgical centers. It's going to be huge. And then we look at some of the uh, street improvements that will result Cherry Avenue leading up to the 210 and further up. This property kind of surrounds the northern Fontana area and has been empty for years, but not for long. Oh, and my goodness. So this is going to be very exciting. You know what I'm most excited, though, about? It's going to create 7,500 new jobs. 
That is tremendous. And, you know, I was looking at statistics recently and I see that Fontana is what, number one or number two in the region for jobs and workforce. We are the number one job creator. I'm not discounting my regional friends. We love them too, but we are creating jobs and we're also creating opportunities for other small businesses or businesses to actually come up in this environment because all of these businesses that show up in Fontana, and don't get me wrong, people just want to talk about the warehouses. Those are the buildings. People don't realize we have over 420 manufacturers in the city. They're not all logistics and transportation. People in this town are making things for the world. For and the that is world. and that is critical. You know, having manufacturing here in our city, you know, in our cities, in our state, in California, given the proximity to the ports, given the proximity to all of the freeways that we have, all the main arteries, the 15, the 210, the 5, you know, the the 10, um, going into every state uh, heading east, um, it's very, very exciting. How many jobs are you looking at today in the city of Fontana that that you can say uh, you have the workforce uh, numbers? Well, we keep adding jobs. But the workforce puts the entire region at 66,000. And I would speculate that we're at least 30% of that. Wow. that is. we're on the move here. And and not only what you have to look at is we are actually getting people off the freeway because most of the jobs when Fontana really started moving up were in Los Angeles County or they were in Orange County and, and as far as San Diego County. And now people that live here can actually ride to work on their bike. They can take public transportation. In some cases, they can walk to work. And so it makes a big difference. And then we have other sectors. We've got Kaiser Hospital. They're the biggest employer in our city. And then we have the Montana Unified School District. They're a big employer. And we have so many jewels here that are doing things during the pandemic. The best joke I had is we never ran out of toilet paper. The <laughs> largest toilet paper paper supplier in the West Coast is right here in Fontana. So I kept teasing the guys at Costco because I stayed in touch with all the stores because it is it is daunting when you walk in a store and there's empty shelves. And they never I said, you guys never ran out of toilet paper. Did you you know, I knew you can only get three at a time, but. They said, well, all we got to do is roll down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Just drive up the street, down the block, and they're there making it all day and all night, right? Manufacturing it. And it's so good for our, our schools. That's why I put together that Mayor's Education Coalition. We want to bring all the school districts that service us under the umbrella of let's all work together for the good of our kids. So we've got a new program coming up. It's called Movers, Helpers, and Shakers. I think that's it. <laughs> I love it. Well, you you know, you have so many amazing programs. I know it's hard to keep track, but they're all <laughs> successful. But that is the market. You know what it was? Leader. Healers. 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 I wanted shakers because I just had a great meeting with some of the ballet kids. And they want to make sure that we don't forget about the arts. And I promise them we will not forget about the arts. We, we love the arts. We need the arts. It really activates parts of our brains and our beings that only art can do to really make us brilliant at business, really, um, and across the board. So what is this program called again? It's called Movers. Let me make sure I don't mess okay. it up because the young people really get me when I mess up. <laughs> this year, you know, we had a program before where we actually exposed young people to planes, trains, and autonomous vehicles. They really like that. We were out at the airport, actually. But this year's program is going to be called Makers, Movers, Helpers, and Healers. So we're going to be dealing with the hospital. We're going to be dealing with manufacturing. We're going to learn how to do different transportation modes. And helpers just have such a wide range. Police, fire, also those that work in public works county and city occupations. I just talked to a group last weekend, young men, hungry, ready to get out there. I said, you don't understand the benefits of working, helping others, particularly when you need a pension. They have those type of benefits. 
But more importantly, you learn how to help your community. So those are our helpers. So we want to expose our youth to all of those careers. I love it. I love it. You know, I recently heard of an amazing new high school that is calling Fontana home, and that is the Entrepreneurship High School. I mean, it's incredible. We don't live in Fontana, but I told my boys, I said, I I am very, very, I'm this close to registering and, you know, driving you 30 minutes, 40 minutes that way and back. Uh, Well, you know, it's a choice. Don't you like having a choice? People have lost their ability to have a choice. A lot of people, charter school versus public school. I don't look at it that way. I look at it as an opportunity for a parent to decide, where do you want to put your child? And that's what this, when you go to their center in Highland, they've got drones all over the place and kids walking around these big old books, creating things. What's wrong with that? But we're going to have it right here in our city. And it's almost built. I went over there the other day and Some Saturdays, I'll just drive up there and watch them work. It's just gorgeous what they're putting together. So it's just a choice. I I absolutely love it. And, you know, as parents, when it comes to education and uh, those that really focus on those choices, I mean, the more choices you have, the better opportunities you, you know, you have to offer your children and students, right? And so people don't realize I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. Education was our key. It was the key for us to do better. And my parents firmly believed in it. You know, we used to play school even in the backyard. We have the whole neighborhood over there. And of course, I always got to be the teacher because I was the (laughs) oldest one. And we just have fun. And then when we would get together, it was fun to do homework together and then sit and do projects together. We want to get our youth back to that day. And that's what these programs do. I love it. I love it. So do you have an idea of when you're going to be breaking ground on those infrastructures you got the $15 million grant for? We are working on that now. Uh, We're working on the final plans. Uh, There is some building going on. Some of the properties were bought by other people and they've already started building homes. And now we're going to be meeting with uh, the group that owns the majority of those acreages to start making some decisions. So as soon as we get those, trust me, You'll see me dancing up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm excited. And, you know, your energy is just absolutely contagious. And it's really a testament to the energy and the passion that you pour into your role as mayor and all the various other committee roles and board roles and, you know, service heart that you have. It's just it's really phenomenal. So, again, thank you so much for being with us today. So. No Let's talk a little bit again. Um, the Education Coalition is that head by you, or do you have a group of student volunteers that kind of take that and lead uh, the way for that organization? It's even better than that. This city is uh, we have five school districts that service us. It's Rialto Unified, my good friend Edgar Montes, he comes to our meeting. We've got the West Valley Water uh, President Director Channing Hawkins, he comes to the meetings. Because we want to make sure we include all the occupations. That's from Rialto. And then we have Colter Unified School District, Israel Fontes. He doesn't miss a meeting. And he, when we have the programs, he brings students from Colter Unified. And you, it, I have to tell him, Israel, it's for the kids. Get out the way. <laughs> he is so passionate about it. And then we have Adam Perez and Joe Armadares from Fontana Unified. And Joe works for the railroad. And he does not let us do anything without the railroad. And Adam is a a police officer, his day job, and on our board, too. And we're all working closely together so that we just get the young people exposed. And then we have Chafee Union High School District. We've got Don English. He's there at our meeting, and that's Etiwanda High School. And then we have Etiwanda's uh, School District, because all the elementaries, all of those are together. And we know that Fontana Unified is the largest of all of these groups. But all these superintendents and educators, and we have a lot of community organizations that have participated with us, empowering success. They do tutoring and programming for children, no matter what district you go to. And we don't leave out our special needs and our autism children. We've got Stephanie Conaga in there. She makes sure she doesn't let us do anything without them. And then our chamber president, Phil Cochran, he's there, and we work closely with the chamber. The chamber 
is going to be one of the leaders in this upcoming program because the business community is directly participating. So we've got plans just to expose students to an option. Everyone is not going to college. That does not mean they don't count. Right. We have to provide, once again, choices or options. And you'd be surprised when you see those students' face that they find, you know what? You're valuable to me. And that's what we want to really get across to you, that you don't have to feel bad because you want to make something. America was built on making something. So we want those students to participate. Well, not only that, but we need that, you know, that workforce and that brilliance back in, in the maker space, right? In, in creating and building and uh, because we need somebody to help out with those infrastructures, right? Uh, the Aye. infrastructure projects and uh, people to design them here locally, people to, you know, dig in and, and really get the, you know, do the heavy lifting and uh, allow us all to be proud of just the magnificent uh, forward improvement that we can see all around us when we're driving on those smooth roads and seeing at a more beautiful expanded, you know, hospitals and schools uh, to benefit um, and care for, uh, you know, the community that you serve. You know, it was when we put that grant together, we had support letters from all the unions. We had support letters from the schools, from our elected officials that are our neighbors because this is for the region. Whatever happens on those properties are going to affect everyone. That's why we've been successful with our Healthy Fontana program, which is what Fontana Walks is part of. Because you may live in another town, but you may be working in Fontana. And we always want to have activities that you can participate, even if it's on your lunch hour. I saw a report today that said you can cut dimension risks down almost 75%. If you just walk 10,000 steps a day, that really isn't that difficult, especially if you're at home because you're cleaning, you're over here. But if you're at work, you're walking down the hallway, you're doing all these things, 10,000 steps, you're good. It goes by in a flash, right? It and does. so I'm curious, Mayor Warren, how many mayors from other cities across, you know, the country or even in California, are you getting saying, Mayor Warren, how are you doing this? Help us. You know, you have the framework. Uh, what is the model and how can we apply it here in our own city? You know, it comes down to being able to work with everyone. You know, people in this country have allowed party division to nearly destroy things. But mayors can't do that. Mayors have to work with everyone, even people that don't agree with me. If they come and talk with me, they will tell you I did listen to them because no idea is a bad idea. We have to work together. So when I talk to other mayors, I make it clear we're all in the same game. And that's the way you have to approach things. You have to bring in everyone. Uh, we we recently. Uh, I call it, I recently remarried the pallet industry. They were really kind of upset with us thinking that we didn't value them. Sat down with their leaders and we're working together very well because the pallets, you can't do anything right. in the supply chain without pallets. And I have embraced that industry and we are, it, it's just been great. And they have opportunities for our kids. For me, I grew up in an atmosphere where all the jobs went away. It was terrible. I saw people lose a lot of hope. I don't want that for this city. I don't want that for my grandchildren. I don't do anything in this city that would hurt my family. And I'm not going to do anything that would hurt your family. We do everything as far as we can. We, we follow all the state laws. We follow all the federal laws. We look for new ways of doing things even better. We did that ordinance. And it was for the industrial warehousing sector. And we worked closely with their industrial groups. We worked closely with the unions. We worked closely with having an air quality study, which shown that we are at least 20 years better than we were 20 years ago. Wow. And so we just continually do things. We just came up with a greener initiative. We're going to plant a thousand trees. I can't wait. That'll be getting started soon. Because we all know trees really help us with the oxygen. Yes, they so do. We just want to do everything right. 
And we want to make sure that people understand this town has always been a hub for business. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we're coming up on a break. For those listening, I'm Yvette Walker on Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM and KMET TV, talking to Mayor Aquanetta Warren with an update on all things City of Fontana, California, one of the fastest growing and soon to become the largest populated city in California, discussing a recent visit from U.S. Secretary of Transportation, homelessness, the Mayor Education Coalition, and the overall state of the city when we return. Every two seconds, someone needs a blood transfusion. Be on the giving side. Livestream Blood Bank supports patients in 80 Southern California hospitals. Call 1-800-TRY-GIVING for more information and to set an appointment. City of Hope is driven to making a difference in the lives of people with cancer and diabetes. We accomplish this by conducting innovative research and providing outstanding care. If you or a loved one has received a cancer diagnosis, go to cityofhope.org to learn more about how our innovative approach could change your outcome. Ontario International Airport is on to a better way to fly with over 65 daily non-stop flights to more than 20 major destinations and the easiest airport experience in Southern California. Visit flyonto.com slash Ontario to learn more about Ontario International Airport today. Hi, I'm San Bernardino County Sheriff Shannon Dykus. If you're looking to start an exciting career in law enforcement and make a difference in your community, we are hiring. Dispatchers, nurses, deputies, laterals, and many more. For a complete list of our jobs and more information, visit sheriffsjobs.com. Cal State San Bernardino is home to the only School of Entrepreneurship in California. With globally ranked degree programs, you can start your journey today to become a successful entrepreneur. Learn more and connect at entre.csusb.edu. The University of Laverne is rated first in California for alumni satisfaction. Learn more about accelerated programs offered online and on campus in Laverne, Irvine, Ontario, Burbank, or College of the Canyons. Visit go.laverne.edu. The University of Laverne. Go.laverne.edu. It's summer, the sun is shining, and now's the time to make the most of your solar panels. Don't lose up to 50% of your solar panels' efficiency just because they're dirty. Get the most out of your solar panels and call my friends at Solar Panel Cleaning Specialists at 951-663-7502. That's 951-663-7502. Mention this ad and receive your discount. Offer expires December 31st. Welcome back. For those listening, I'm Yvette Walker on Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV, talking to the fabulous and beautiful Mayor Aquanetta Warren with an update on all things City of Fontana, California, one of the fastest growing and soon to become the largest populated cities in California, discussing a recent visit from U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Homelessness, the Mayor of Education Coalition, and overall state of the city. Thank you again for being with us today, Mayor Warren. Thank you. This has been fun. Yes, it's always a blast when you're on with us. Um, Always love it. So prior to the break, we uh, spoke about the $15 million infrastructure grant that we're just waiting to hear on when we're going to, you're going to be breaking ground on, which is so exciting. Look, we, I want to be there already, right? Oh, you will be. You know, the break, the groundbreaking. And also, um, you know, the Mayor Education Coalition, um, brilliant programs and curious um please talk a little bit more about the activities that the students that are a part of the mayor's education coalition um what are some of the activities they get to engage in uh with all of these leaders that you have kind of brought in to uh you know demonstrate various career pathway opportunities well you know it was interesting when we did planes trains and autonomous vehicles last year 
some students had never even been to an airport. Wow. We find that in San Bernardino, and I'm going to talk about fairness soon. I, I don't want to forget that. In San Bernardino, we have a lot of uh, problems like that. Some of the kids never been to the mountains. We're only a few miles from the mountains. Wow, well, yeah. Haven't been to the mountains. So we, it's our job as leaders and educators, particularly, to expose our kids to everything. And the people that come out on the weekends when we did that program, I just got to take my hat off to them because they were so patient, so knowledgeable, and so nice to our students. So they got to demonstrate what they were working on and they got to participate. But this program we're doing next year, is going to just jump on top of all the program that we've done because we've got people volunteering to do so much. And it'll give each student a chance to have hands on a profession that they're looking into going into. I love it. Well, if you have any students that are interested in broadcasting, please let me know. I'm happy to, you know, show them oh. a few things myself. Wow. I think we just got a new teacher here. Okay. Oh. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a background in education, actually. Oh. Uh, so um, I just want to hear a lot more about what is happening in Fontana, because the last time we spoke, you were completing um, the development of a brand new park. And I recently saw that, you know, the update is... We got 58 parks here. Yes. 58. And we make sure that we work closely with all of our leagues, all of our parents, seniors, everybody. And you know, the latest thing is pickleball. Have you ever played pickleball? My kids play it all the time. They love it. So we have a real growing group of pickleball players. So they're demanding more space. So I just want to let them know we're working on it. We haven't forgotten you. Okay. But they have some spots. And so they're really enjoying that. But this new park is in South Fontana. And what we try to do is have mega parks in the North, the core, and now South Fontana. It's, it goes back to promises made, promises kept. So that park, it just got some of the turf in it. It's almost finished. We're looking forward to this opening. I won't say when that opening will be because I'm always jinxing everything, but it's coming. <laughs> well, you know, it's just moving dates, right? It happens, but it happens on its own time. And, right. you know, especially, you know, leaders like yourself, you're working on so many projects and with so many variables. And the fact that any of it even gets done is a miracle unto itself. The fact that you have so many of these projects completed, not only completed, but set as benchmarks and standards, national standards, right. um, you know, that is a tremendous testament. And that's what I said when I became mayor, I was going to take Fontana National. And I meant that because I think when you get that type of exposure, people want to be a part. You know, I did Undercover Boss and I didn't want to do it at first. But you know what has happened? Part of that was dealing with homelessness. And we have people that have been meeting with me that have ideas and possible funding to help us with our homeless situation. And that's what sold me on that show. One of the other mayors that had participated told me, you need to do this because people will see nationally and all over the world what you're trying to do and they'll want to be a part of it. And we've already had one person come in and sit down and talk about how they'd like to help us with funding. That's what came up as a result of that. But that's not all we're doing with homelessness. We just got two grants. We got uh, one grant that is um, 1.7. One is by with HUD, and we're going to be helping not only homeless people that are on the streets, but families that are about to be homeless or people that project issues. Because, you know, during the pandemic, uh, we had programs to help you with your rent and the mortgage. If you were the landlord, we had to beg people to come in here and get those resources. Wow. It, it was just terrifying for me to, to the thought of having to give money back. I didn't want to do that. And we went way out marketing to get people so we could help them so right. they wouldn't be homeless or be evicted. So right now, those grants we're getting, but we just got another 2.5 from the state, Home Key. And we're going to be working with one of our, our partners that we already work with, and that is Water of Life CityLink. CityLink has established itself as a social service organization of that church. But they also partnered with us to get that home key grant. You had to have an existing establishment that was doing the case management and had a record, a track record. 
People don't realize CityLink feeds over a thousand people a week. Wow. And people really depend on them because with money as it is, they need those resources. So that allows them to use their money in other places, especially when they have children. And they also provide clothing. And when the officers, we have all these teams, the MET team, the COAST, all these programs, but COAST directly works with not only the homeless that you might see in the park or in different facilities around town, they help people maintain their dignity. When someone has an episode, that's what they usually call it, or having a mental health issue, right? They it, some of them live with their families, and I've seen it. You have the fire truck come out, the police come out, the ambulance, and next thing you know, the whole neighborhood is, what's going on over there? And with Coast, when we get a call like that, Coast has been trained to deal with those issues. They show up in a van with their dog, Scout. He's a, she's a great dog. And they deal with it. And they ask by volunteer, if you like to go to the hospital or would you like to just, you know, if you don't go out on a trolley and all that, they, 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 keep, they maintain your dignity. And it also helps with the families that are dealing with this to know that there is a resource. So we're doing everything we can, but we're going to do better and bigger. We want to put a shelter that facilitates mental health treatment, helping people get back on their feet, and helping people have options of what they can do in the future. Because we think homelessness, it does relate to mental health, but these are our neighbors, these are our family members, and these are our friends. And so we want to help them. So in Fontana, we're approaching homelessness in a way that it should be approached, not running from it, acting like it does not exist. But I have to give it to the West End cities. We've been meeting and it's been our major topic because Rancho's homeless today becomes my homeless tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do, we have to do it regionally. And so that's what we've been working on. Well, I, I love the concept of your coast approach for mental health issues, because I can only imagine if someone is, in, you know, uh, experiencing a mental health episode, let's say, and then seeing the police and then the firefighters and the lights and the sounds, that doesn't sound like an environment that's going to calm the situation or bring peace to the person that's having this mental health episode. But, you know, rather the approach that you are uh, creating, which is much softer, uh, compassionate, um, understanding and embracing sounds like um, it would be a much more successful and beneficial approach for those uh, that are having those type of episodes and make it more welcoming for, for family members of people that have those experiences to reach out and to lean on Coast as a resource. Um, that is a tremendous model. I'm guessing that's probably going to be something that is going to be looked at and hopefully um, you know, applied across the board. Again, you do have uh, the nation's attention. Well, you know, our police officers are second to none. They always think of ways that they can be a part of the community in any way they can. And it makes a difference. When you have a, a police department that's willing to have play day with the police, just so they can expose the children. And, and even children that have gone through trauma when they show up with teddy bears and toys, even though there's something going on in that living room, those kids feel a lot better about what is happening. And that's right. what our officers always try to do. Our fire department, they're there for everyone. And we want them to show up. But with this team in a van, it just makes it a, a better presentation for the family and the person that's going through their changes. And they not only do that, they really work with uh, our homeless because we all know a lot of them don't want shelter. They don't want to uh, uh, leave their animals. So we're working with, uh, we're toying with working dogs for warriors. They are a, such a phenomenal group that works with our animals. And they work with our veterans with uh, severe PTSD, providing emotional dogs for them. Well, imagine being able to if you are homeless and you want treatment, but you're worried about your, your family member, which is your pet, being housed, safe, and being there when you come back out. Right. So we're working with them to put something together. 
And I'm excited about that because as I talk to the homeless, they're no different than you and I. They don't want to lose their things and they don't want to not have their pets. So it's important to them. And we want to facilitate so that we can help them get off the street and help them be safer. I love it. You're looking for ways to eliminate barriers for people to want to go to the services that can basically transform their lives, services that are created and developed again with compassion, with the, you know, the best experts available and with resources that are really aimed at transforming their lives. And that we is even have a behavioral technician from our great county of San Bernardino on this team. And those ladies and, and guys are phenomenal. They go out on crisis management all the time. San Bernardino County, uh, they are really trying to uh, work through this whole uh, scenario of homelessness and mental health. So the behavioral techs really help us quite a bit. Wow. Okay. So then the next uh, item that I think that we should talk uh, talk about are the People United for Fairness, because all these programs that you're talking about are not only based on fairness, but they're based on, you know, beyond fairness, right? Um, yeah, based resources. On funding. Yes, resources, funding, support. So please talk a little bit more about People United for Fairness. I tell you, I, uh, I've worked on a lot of initiatives. I've worked on a lot of things. This is big. Uh, our county, uh, you know, we had this initiative that basically put our supervisors as part time, one term. We don't want that. This is the largest county in the United States. We don't want to be uh, legislated by unelected staff members. We want our supervisors to lead this county. So that's that's Measure D. EE is very unique in that it is time for San Bernardino County to get its fair share. Who, who argues about fairness? We would like the voters to join us and ask the supervisors to do the study to see where we're impacted, where we're not getting our fair share of the state funding and resources. The state has an abundance of departments. And I know a lady told me that night, I can just call them up and tell them to come over here. Well, we do that. But we need to quantify whether or not we're getting our fair share. And this allows them to put the funds that are gonna be necessary to do that study, as well as having the buy-in from the public to say, that's what we want you to do. Right. But we continue to work with our state partners. Some of them have gotten a little bit, taking it personal, like they're not providing, but they need to understand more what this county needs. And then they need to, this is a tool that they'll be able to take at the state level and say, look, this is what we need in our county. This county is not playing around. You, you just talked about job creation. That's right. That reflects on the state. We're moving the economy. When the pandemic hit, San Bruno County was one of the first counties to come out of it. And we're dealing with major issues. Right. And all we want is to get our fair share. People don't realize the cities, in most cases, get less than 10% of their property taxes. And in Fontana, it's 3%. And we're still fighting that battle. Is that fair? I don't and think so. It, it doesn't sound fair, but there must be some rationale behind the disparity. Have you been offered any? Well, the, the thing is, redevelopment was a big thing. We were 72% redevelopment. And when we would come up to them about it, well, you know, it's all about the math and the formulas. We have a very, uh, I have to say, robust fire district, you know, and we make sure that we keep our, our citizens safe. So they kind of use that against us. But it's not fair when you look at some of the streets, you know, we're talking about going electric vehicles. We want to do that. It's probably going to be the way of the world. But I'm worried about what happens to the gas tax that supposedly helps fix our streets. Are we going to include those discussions and how we do all this? We just want to be at the table. In San Bernardino, there's not a large enough city even to go to the round table the governor holds with the 13 largest cities. He was very gracious and included me the last time at their meeting. 
you have to be 350,000 and above. And so Riverside, the mayor of their mayor, Dawson, I love her. She makes sure that she brings the information back. But wouldn't it be nice to have a seat at that table too? But he doesn't forget us totally. I'm not going to say that. He's doing that care court. I'm behind that 100%. We need that to resolve some of these homeless issues. A person that's laying their urine all day, talking to themselves, or taking drugs to try to make their lifestyle better because they can't deal with the things that are going on in their head. Do you really think that person is capable of volunteering for assistance? The answer is no. We've got to help these people. So Care Court would provide that compassion that if they get in trouble or they need assistance, it may go to conservatorship, but a conservatorship in a way that they get the help they need. And we've got to start approaching this for what it is. We've got some very ill people out there that need our help. So I am really happy. The governor came with the care court. I even wrote an op-ed on it. And we insist that we are part of that process. But it's time for this county to speak up for itself and say it loud that we want our fair share. And so when you talk about the fair share uh, opportunity, right, and that's people united for fairness, let's talk about, you know, some of those disparities and how they manifest themselves throughout our community. Uh, The most impressive presentation I've ever seen our share of Dykes put on was at that hearing at the board of supervisors. When he talked about the jail system and the funding that comes, and then we had our DA uh, D.A. Anderson, who's just amazing, Jason, he talked about that there were not 19 courts that were approved through the budget. Well, someone else talked about that. I guess there's 19 courts that have been approved to be built through the state and not a one of them in San Bernardino. We have judge positions that are funded, but we don't have anywhere to go with them or take them or have them a place to work. Fontana Court has become traffic and Chino And, you know, all the courts are doing their part, but I've been up to Sacramento asking for more judges so that we can get people in and out of the system faster. And more importantly, we can keep our communities safe. So those are the kind of disparities that go on. You know, the the whole idea of uh, mental health money comes through the feds, through the state. We get that. And we we try our best to work with the county and we're going to continue to work with the county because None of us can survive without each other. But there are so many things that have been coming up and as and we don't know them all. So that's what we want the voters. Tell this board to look into this and let's start working with our state to get our fair share. And so what has the response from the community been through this effort? I'll tell you, we have the website going up soon. It's called People unified for fairness you know we're still you know still getting together there uh we're going to have yard signs we're going to have signs we're going to have uh all kind of advertisement most people i talk to they look at me like why aren't we getting our fair share why is this an issue now and they're right but you know as everything else you grow and as we grow we start to look and start noticing differences and then that's when you begin to say because look at the housing People moved out of those counties because they couldn't afford to live there. If you try to buy a house in L.A. County, you better not, unless you're a millionaire <laughs> almost. Trust me. Yes. I, I can't believe the, I, my, my little, uh, a little friend of mine, as I call her, <laughs> she's my little cousin. She just bought a house in L.A. and I just told her, how did you afford that? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do that? <laughs> What did you do to get that house? Out? They're so expensive. So people came out here. So we're taking in the population here. Give us the tools to make sure we keep those people safe and thriving. Don't just dump on us. Let's let's have what we need to do this, to do it correctly. Nobody has told me no, yes. You get it? No, (laughs) yes. No, (laughs) yes. That's right. No, No, yes. People just look at me like, why aren't we? Why is this just coming up? Well, you know, it don't matter when it came up. We're going to deal with it. That's right. And the fact that you are even have your attention on it, right? That is that is 90% of, of the issue. The rest Well, this is started just... with we need to secede, but it leads up to the discussion on secession. People have told me we're crazy, whatever. 
<laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you something. I always tell people, never say, ain't going to happen. When I look at myself, last night they had the Emmys. When I saw Cheryl Lee Ralph get up there and do her song, it was amazing. But you never say never. You say, let me see. Never and, say never. Yeah, let me try. Let me give it a shot, right? Let me give it a shot. San Bernardino County deserves its fair share. And there's no reason why we can't get it. Absolutely. And it's like I tell my kids, the last thing you ever want to say is shoulda, coulda, woulda. That's you right. You want to say that. So when you see a, an issue, a matter, you face it head on and you get all the right people on board. And that's why you are such exactly. a beacon of a leader and so but, recognized. But the leadership part only happens if the great citizens come along with you. And they need to recognize we cannot survive with part time supervisors. They need to be in there 24-7 doing their job like your mayor and all the rest of us are doing. We're too big. We're too big. Absolutely. Well, I cannot believe that's been an hour, Mayor Warren, but thank you so much for being with us. I know you have to make it to a meeting right now, a city council meeting, but yeah. thank you so much for being with us and for sharing all these amazing things that are happening at Fontana, um, not only here regionally, but on a national level as well. Thank you and, so much. And there's more to come. More to come. Absolutely. <laughs> Always, especially with you at the helm, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so, you. For everyone listening today, don't forget to look for us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Check us out on scbrtalk.com. And don't forget to download the free live streaming app on Google Play or the Apple App Store. Don't miss my interview with Justin Brown, the founder of TNN, an IT managed services provider. He started his company in 2001 when he was 21 years old. His company has received recognition by the MSP Mentor 501 globalist is a microsoft silver partner and has been on the inc 5000 growing corporation list multiple times higgs company exists to support small and medium businesses with all their technology needs this includes phones copiers surveillance systems cloud services and cyber security next week we will have rob permis he is the founder of you makers makerspace in upland california a makerspace is where members go to invent and make products. They are part of a maker culture. It is a mutual benefit core. It is part of the sharing economy where thousands of maker spaces, Startup Blink, um, have opened around the world. Uh, they're new to product development, art, industrial design school, and small business incubators. Rob Puramis has a BS in ceramic engineering, an executive MBA from GCU's Peter Drucker School of Management. He's also a certain Certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt, project manager and global business professional. He's been an instructor at UCR Extension and is a consultant and a trainer. His past social entrepreneurship ventures include 12 Team Upland Volleyball Club, Upland's US YVL Youth Volleyball League, and used an open source learning management to create free online courses with over 2,000 enrollments. We will see you next week, everyone. Do not miss it.